Okay, ladies, you're live. Good morning. Good everyone. morning. We're back. Weirdest dream for the last two nights. it up yet? I shared it so it should pop up now. Good morning Linda and Jean and Leslie. My other crazy cat lady. Hi Christine. Hi Dad. Hello, hello, hello. Hi Bob. Yes Christine, we're back. Ace, are you watching us on your new, uh... Your Father's Day laptop? <laughs> <laughs> I told him how I texted what I thought was Kenneth, saying, hey, what size monitor did Papa have? And the lady goes, well, sorry, uh, wrong number, but I hope your Papa likes his laptop. <laughs> Morning, Julie. stuffy. The door's not open either. All right, we ready? Yep. Welcome to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer Blackwell. And I'm Teresa Straub. We are live here after a week off on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live feed. Thank you all for joining us here back again this morning. Yes, it was a, it was a weird week. Um, I lost track of days. <laughs> that happens. It does happen when you take more than two days off in a row, but it was nice. It was nice. I'm glad to be back, though. Um, it's weird not doing the show. Well, we left town <laughs> on Tuesday, and it felt like a Friday. So then 4th yeah. of July felt like a Saturday, and everything from there was crazy because we had a wedding after that, and then it felt like a Friday again, but it was Thursday. I, who's on Thursday? Hey, yeah. I, I think today's Monday. On, um, <laughs> on Wednesday, on 4th of July, I kept thinking it was a Saturday. Just because thinking th Tuesday is my Friday and go to Wednesday and it's Wednesday, it's not Saturday. Um, yeah, I was all turned around, but it's okay. It was it was well worth it. I, I got some much needed rest and spent the time with the family. It was a lot of fun. And technically, we did get a little rain on our vacation. I know. <laughs> I just wish I was awake to see it. <laughs> well, I, I was awake for a good part of the light show. And I got up, I was telling Janice I could see through my closed eyelids the bright flashes yeah. of lightning. Well, because it, 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 it wakes you up and you're not all the way asleep. And so you can, you can see the, um, the flashes of light that are coming into the room and it, enough to where you're like, oh, you have to tell yourself that's lightning outside. But yeah, it was, it was quite a show last night. It was intense. And I don't, the, the thunder wasn't as uh, crazy as the lightning though. I, I could hear a little bit of the thunder. But the wind was whipping. Oh, I don't mm -hmm. know where your thunder was at, but it was really thunderous at my house. house. <laughs> <laughs> it was. There was a couple of them. Uh, my cat was, she, I, she ended up going to hide because it was It was really loud. Mm -hmm. And um, my son stayed the night at my brother's house, and we were worried because he's not a fan of, of the thunder. Neither am I. That <laughs> horrid song. I can't stand <laughs> that song. <laughs> that song. That song. <laughs> I can't stand that song. But um, he, uh, he stayed the night at my brother's, and we were kind of worried about him because some of those were really, really loud but um i guess they slept through it so that's a good thing well as a result of the storm we still have a few power outages that mm -hmm. remain when i came in this morning several of the lights were on i uh, took a, a back route to get here my, yeah. my old usual route mm -hmm. and i had to drop my husband off at work and came up off of interstate 8 to the fourth avenue exit mm -hmm. at winter Haven, winter haven drive and first street and third street the lights were both out on fourth the aps crews were right in front of the heritage library oh good working on that right there now, the most recent update I have is that 60 customers are still impacted from 1st Street to 14th Street and Avenue A to Main Street. They are dealing with equipment problems. Mm -hmm. that, that's all that they specify there. And uh, an estimated restoration time is 1030 for that area. Now, it's going to be a little colder today, but we have that humidity. Today, we're looking yeah. about 106. Now, I'll take it. <laughs> at the second area, 36 customers remain without power. That's uh, via Canada to North Frontage Road and Baja Street to via Salat or via Salida. Uh -huh. And they're doing troubleshooting in that area. So right now, they're because they just don't know yet, 
it's a pretty long range estimated time for restoration. It's 845 this evening. Mm -hmm. But again, once they figure out what that issue is, hopefully they can rectify it and get it back on pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely. You, you know, and, and if you are without power, Take this time to, you know, visit our libraries. Um, you can go walk around Walmart. Take it. We have a lot of cooling stations and go watch a movie. You know, try and stay cool because it is, it, like Jennifer said, you know, 10, 109 or 106 is still rather warm. It, it is. And uh, again, we you can definitely, I opened up one of the, the studio door here to allow better airflow because yeah. it's getting pretty stuffy in here right yeah. now. And, and it, it's funny, I, I, with the storm that hit last night, you wouldn't have known. Aside from the large amount of humidity that we had yesterday, you you really didn't see it coming unless you were watching the radar. And it was funny um, because I seen a post this morning. If this storm actually makes it to us, it's going to be a good one. And in the middle of the night, when my husband woke up, he checked the radar. He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "It it, it was a rather large storm, and it's monsoon season. We can tell you there's a two percent chance of rain, and we'll get a storm like we did last night." And so. there yesterday at one point it showed a two percent chance, mm -hmm. and then forty five today. It, it just it goes up and down yeah. seriously by the hour. You, you can never. Season. So it's more of an estimation when I say there's a 20% chance of showers, 80% uh, it won't, but there have been times where we have 80% chance of rain and we get nothing, nothing. and 10% and we have a torrential it's, downpour. It's usually, it's usually opposite. So so. This, <laughs> this is just the perfect opportunity for us to remind you now that we actually have had uh, some storm mm -hmm. situations here, a reminder if you're out driving or you're walking somewhere and you come across a downed line, mm -hmm. Unless you're a professional with Arizona Public Service <laughs> or, or even one of the other phone companies or cable companies that deals with the, the cabling system, you're familiar with what type it is, never attempt to go across it. Exactly. Always go around, but make sure that you contact law enforcement and APS because you may be that first person on scene mm -hmm. and depending, a lot of our the storms hit overnight. So some people were still coming in when it was dark this morning yeah. and may not be aware that there's a situation like that in the road. So let those uh, first responders know as soon as you can so they can get crews working on it. Mm -hmm. But like Mike Erford said before, and even Anna Chalk with APS, uh, a line that may, may be dead at one moment can become live. Yeah, very, time, very quickly. Yeah. So you just, you never know, leave that up to the experts. Do not try to cross. And while we had a little rain here, I know uh, East County got a little bit more rain than us mm -hmm. too, so you might have more of the areas, the washes that are running. Exactly. Be careful. Uh, I recommend not trying to attempt crossing those mm -hmm. just because uh, some of those areas, a little bit further you get into Maricopa County, I know the yeah. rest, the washes run like crazy down Dead Cow Road. Yeah. It, it's a really bad spot throughout we, there. We had a scare one time. It, it wasn't, um, we went through just before the storm was hitting we were try we were already on dead cow road and um it we there wasn't actual rain where we were but the washes had already started running and we were already more than 75 percent of the way and it doesn't look like a lot of water and we took um kevin's truck on purpose because my little car if we happened to run into anything it would have probably been swept away but we took kevin's truck and it, just the sheer power of the the water was moving his truck and there was a, a car behind us we actually waited to make sure that they got out safely because it was pushing the truck around i mean it's it's a scary thing, so just stay better stay away. And, you know, any time that you have to be rescued for those types of situations, you have to pay the if, fee for that. If you attempt to cross a washer, you're in a situation, it's called the stupid motorist law. And it's named that because of a reason. Yeah. It, it, it's not to be hurtful. It's no. pretty much to call out the fact that you put yourself in a situation uh -huh. that warranted our first responders and other people to come out and thus exactly. putting themselves at risk. Exactly. So avoid it if you can do so. And we were in the same situation. It was we we generally travel in July. We would go back to the White Mountains mm -hmm. and visit my mother-in-law and my parents, my family in Southeast Arizona. Coming back down that the same dead cow road, and that's not the official name for it, by the State way. It's just it's just what three forty seven three forty seven. What, what a, a lot of people know. It was actually a rainstorm, and the wash was flooding, and we were in. Uh, we had a Chrysler three hundred at the time. And it sits very low. Yeah. And, you know, fortunately, Jeff was taking it at a, you know, taking the washes at a little bit of an angle going yeah. slowly, too. But you don't want to go too slow because then it can catch you and carry you away. Mm -hmm. And uh, people along that stretch are pretty good about helping one another. So oh, you do, do have to use caution. And by all means, listen to the radio. Um, install the different weather apps on your phone. Get notifications. Did you get the dust storm notification mm -hmm. in the middle of the night? I did not. I did. Okay. I, I but my phone's been acting weird. So I, I, I received it, but I don't know if the other people in my house did either. 
Now, I also subscribe to the National Weather uh, Service on I Twitter, see. but it came through as an emergency alert type mm -hmm. of alert on the phone. So maybe it was based on my specific area. Yeah, maybe. And we had more dirt or dust coming through where I live. I don't know. I was sleeping. All right. My, my, <laughs> I didn't know until this morning. My, mine was in the kitchen. I, I, saw, I saw your post this morning about blowing dust, and I was like, uh, that was, you know, would have been like, you know, Two three o'clock in the morning that you were awake, but um, yeah, I, I I don't know about the dust. I do. I just heard the. I saw the light storm and heard the rain. So. Well, Christine said you guys may not have been on air, but you guys never stop working. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Technology That's right. is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It definitely. Except is. I had terrible Wi-Fi in a good portion of Safford, where where the wedding was. Well, that's good though. Because I was you wanting to focus on the wedding. It was, but I was wanting to Facebook Live some of it for you. Uh, it was the briefest ceremony I've ever attended. Forty-five seconds might be generous. Yes. I don't know that. It, they now got you have to preface this though. They were already married. They got married in March. March had a yes. courthouse ceremony and wanted to have their big formal ceremony for family and friends. And they picked July. Yeah. In Arizona. <laughs> and it did rain in Safford earlier that day, but about maybe 17 drops. It wasn't it was enough to put a damper on it, but yeah. created some additional humidity, which was once the sun went down, I said, once the sun goes down, it's bearable. It was a beautiful evening. Oh, good. Uh, on the lawn of the Safford City Annex where the ceremony was. So it was... It was interesting. Christine says, I don't think Jen ever sleeps well. That was me last night because yeah. I was up a few different times yeah. checking the situation, making sure um, nothing had caught fire <laughs> with all that lightning. Yeah, there was a fire yesterday. I, I was able to get a picture and send it to you. There was a fire yesterday, but um, none. thankfully, you know, I, I was at the river this weekend. I noticed um, the people that were there were being safe, and they had brought their own grills, packed in, packed out. Um, I did, there was a large number of people uh, floating down, which was awesome to see because on Saturday it was like 114. Mm -hmm. yes. And, um, but I noticed it was funny because you notice there was a group coming by the trash that came first oh. because you would see, you would see, you know, some debris come through and they're like, you, you know, we, we, if we were out there, we would grab it and, you know, pack it out or what, whatever the case may be. But you could tell whose trash it was because here comes a nice big group of people. Exactly. And some people were calling the little trash oh, really? hounds out on, on social media. They yeah. were screenshotting it. And of course we had the, the ones that were still picking up their, you know, trash from other people that mm -hmm. was left along the river. So if you haul it in, pack it out, please. Exactly. It's not hard. You're just being lazy. Yeah, and, and like I said, you know, we would catch it and, and bring it. But it was nice to see people were being safe. They were having a good time, enjoying the waterways. And it was, it, that you have to find all the ways you can to stay cool when you mm -hmm. Now, coming up on the show today, Chris from Buffalo Wild Wings is going to be talking about a takeover for the Humane Society of Yuma. Awesome. And that, that's one of the things with the storming. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about it constantly, protect your animals. I'm sure we had a lot of animals that also went missing last night, last night as oh, a result yeah, of that. Oh, yeah, definitely. My and cat was hiding. Christine said she had to save a kitten about 2.30 this morning that was drowning. Oh. So, you know, th thank you for being available to do that, too. Yes. But, Definitely. yeah, it's it's very, very scary. I know they have the, the Thunder Vest that, that somewhere, and, and it's, if you can keep them in a safe spot, you know, my, my cat was in a room that didn't have any windows, and yeah. I don't know where she sleeps. I don't know that she knew anything was going on at all. She was pretty chill when I let her out this morning for mm -hmm. breakfast. Well, and, and I was uh, kind of shocked at the number of uh, animals that was received at the Humane Society over the holiday yes. and how many were received and then how many were actually picked up by owners. Um, so definitely if you lost your pet during um, the holiday, the 4th of July holiday, check the shelter because they had over 100 go in and not even... I think eight were picked up. Eight or, or last 18? I saw, like 18, yeah, yeah, 18, 18 were picked up. It's a very small number. Some, it is. some people think if they check once that that's all they need, but uh, the animal could be cowering, it could be hiding somewhere a few mm -hmm. days later, and that's when animal control finally gets it or someone surrender or takes it in. Yeah. So you need to go back and check several times. It's a very a, a very sad you know list of statistics. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up on the show, we also have Carol Brown with Helping Hands of Yuma, and then Bridget will be here, and she's going to be talking about Arizona Western College's new UAS and GIS certificate programs. Those involve drones. Oh, and nice. she's going to be speaking with the founder of the program, Mr. I'm not sure if it's Pent or Pint. I'm sorry about that. So <laughs> it we, looks like yeah, we have several guests coming up on the show. First, though, we are going to, we have two different birthday winners to draw. Two. Two. We have, last week we were off. That's right. So while we didn't announce those winners, they, we, they were still, still on our calendar. Yeah, that's right. But we're going to be drawing a winner from the week of June 25th right now. Okay. And one winner will win a Firehouse Subs medium sub, chips, drink, and a dessert. Mm -hmm. And 
just remember, get your entries in for those birthdays. You can enter on our website. How do they do so? All they need to do is go to monstermediayuma.com, click on the Today in Yuma tab. There you will see a li the little Firehouse Subs logo with the Celebrate banner. Right there is the entry form. It goes straight to my inbox. Please give us 24 hours notice and remember to put the actual date of the birthday. All right, our June 25th winner, Anita, is going to draw now. I mix them up. All right, she's reaching in. There we go. Jasmine Rivera. Jasmine! Jasmine Rivera, you are the lucky winner. And I will make sure to get a hold of her if she's not listening. She's oh. probably sleeping. She's expecting. I would be sleeping right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we want to recognize our Fire Health Public Safety Foundation. Yeah. They save lives through donation grants. And since the foundation was started, they've granted over $35 million to provide equipment to our first responders and our hometown heroes. That also results in training and we've been, or we've had recipients here in the Yuma community. Our agencies have benefited. So yep, we sure that have. is awesome there. All right, now our winner from last week, oh. the week of July 2nd. Are you ready, Anita? Ready. All right, we're putting her to work today. <laughs> here we go. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? All together. Okay. <laughs> there, those ones are kind of little. Janice took care of these for me this morning. Thank you. I make them like 24 font, uh, 24 point. At old. least you blow them up from what they normally okay. are. John Clark. Yay! John Can is you. not my biological brother, but he's my brother. <laughs> oh, that John. He's my brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, he's not related. <laughs> that counts. That, that counts. counts. <laughs> well, you are in uh, good company today if you are celebrating a birthday because Tim Kadena is celebrating today along with Heather Crittenden, Bambi Hutchison, Patty Michael, James Pelfrey, and BJ Dale. They're celebrating the birthday on National Sugar Cookie Day. Yummy! Ooh. I like me good sugar cookie. And there was another one on Facebook here. G Gilbert's mom, Dory, is nine. I think he said 97, 97 today. Oh, wow. So, happy birthday, Miss Dory. We hope you have a beautiful day. Yes, And thank, thank you for having a pretty awesome dude for a song. We like him. <laughs> we do. We, we do like him. We'll keep him around. I'm going to have to go find some sugar cookies. <laughs> Those are, oh, those are I was gonna say that's your favorite. Those, I don't like the ones with the frosting. My son loves them, but um, I like the ones with like just the, the sugar. sprinkles. Yeah, the sugar on top. I like sugar cookie dough. I don't like sugar. But cookies. I like them soft. They have to be soft. I'm a soft cookie girl. <laughs> All right, it's today in Yuma on Z93 Outlaw Country Monster Media Yuma.com and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live feed. The show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. They have over 30 years of experience and knowledge, and you can trust Classic Accounting with your business payroll and monthly bookkeeping needs. Give them a call today at 343-1040. And Sprague Sports, check out the Sprague's difference. Buy, sell, trade, or consign firearms with free expert appraisals. Sprague's offers locals price matching and a lifetime warranty. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And if your air system has to work harder due to a clogged filter, it may lead to premature wearing down of different components. And you don't want that to happen, especially this time of year. Visit GetCoolQuick.com. That's quick refrigeration. And our friends over at Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialists, they are locally owned and have been providing pest control services in the Yuma area for over 20 years. They are licensed with the Arizona Game and Fish Department for Safe Humane Wildlife Relocation. You can give them a call today at 928-343-9149. Better yet, go like them on Facebook. We'll be back with Today in Yuma after the break. Do you see Linda's? Yeah. Denise Waugh's birthday. Hi, Bill. Hey there. You can tell he's still in his jammies. Oh, yeah. Is this his first time on the show? Say hi. Say You're hi. on Facebook Live. And you didn't even comb your hair. Hi. Hi. You're 930. You guys come on in. What are you doing? You didn't hear the store? Aww. Oh, gotta hurry, though, because I have to go back. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Come on. Do you want to sit Sure. Here? I will. Chris, you can have a seat right there. And this lovely young lady can have a seat right here. This is my daughter, Kinley. Hi, Kinley. I love your name. It's a beautiful name. Thank you. You're very welcome. Here, go, See you later, Eli. All right, go ahead and pull those microphones close to you. There you go. All right, a little crazy for you guys over there? A little bit. <laughs> We talked about it. I was trying I, to share as best as I could. I am. <coughs> Thank you guys for sharing. Seriously, of like we are overwhelmed. We can we can talk about it more too and let them know. I saw the numbers being posted. I was like, Are you kidding me? Yeah, and they would share them, and then Annette would share them. Yeah. So I was sharing shares of other people just to go yeah, check. Fourth of July, check. the animal shelter oh. we are full, 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 full. full. Wow. Um, 
her grandma um, adopted a cat. Oh. Just in the last week or something. Really? Okay. That's smart. Awesome. Yes. I was just going to say that. Yep. <laughs> Speaking That's of the super humane cool. society. <laughs> Speaking of them. <coughs> Adopt, don't the shop. Because the cat came from the humane society and went to PetSmart. Yeah. That's a good partnership that it they is. have, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <coughs> 25 seconds. Okay. I love animals. That's right, you want to fish in that, huh? Yeah, bait a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure pets might can have you. <laughs> you don't really have to adopt a fish, we can just buy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of fish adoption. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new, a new charity we just got. Adopt, adopt a fish. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are here live on Z93 Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com if you'd like to stream the show, or you can also watch us live on Facebook courtesy of FTS Automotive. A quick happy birthday to Denise Waugh this morning from Linda Willits. Oh, happy birthday. I didn't see that one pop up. All right, now we have several guests in the studio with us today. We've been talking about pets this morning and how important it is if your pet went missing over the 4th of July holiday that you check the Humane Society of Yuma, and I recommend minute more than once. Mm -hmm. We have Lana here, Lana Shapiro with the Humane Society of Yuma. Thanks for coming back. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. And then we have Chris here with us from Buffalo Wild Wings and we're going to be talking about a collaboration. We have a takeover coming up to benefit the Humane Society. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Right, we're yeah. very happy to be a part of this with the Humane Society. It's awesome. And uh, we have actually a whole month going on here in the month of July. Oh, wow. Oh, no. this, this new and budding relationship that we hope to turn it into something <laughs> annual, but it's already, already started out with a bang. Yeah. All right. Well, how is that going to work for the month of July? So, so all, all month um, we are selling these exclusive paws at Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, so it's cash only. It's all the donations that um, come in through the paws go directly to the Humane Society. This is the first time that we are partnering up in this kind of fashion. They've, they've definitely donated to the Humane Society quite a bit. Um, but we are super, super excited to have something going on um, for the entire month of July. Uh, at Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, we really started out with a bang, too. I just checked in this morning with them, and we are well over a thousand dollars. Already? So when when did it start? It, it started? actually started the first of July, but I, our staff was so excited about it that they started the night before. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't even planned to go that way. Uh -huh. And uh, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of staff with pets, and we they submitted pictures of their pets to us and what have you. So we have staff incentive for them to be involved and what have you. And they just started at the evening the night before. And they actually brought in almost $100 before Just the thing night? started. Wow. So, oh, my goodness. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're really getting a lot of participation. We had some TV coverage yesterday. And um, how, how does it actually work? You, you buy a paw? Yep, you simply buy a paw for any amount. And is, it, is it a paper paw? Is it there, is. Okay. It is. It's a paper paw, and they write the amount of your donation. It can be anything from a dollar up to, you know, maybe $100. <laughs> 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 for, for those that are really feeling it. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, they post them on the window, so we're going to have the store covered in paws by the end of the month. As I say, we really want to make this a great promotion to mm -hmm. make sure that we raise a lot of funds to take care of these animals. And where can people find Buffalo Wild Wings if they've been living under a rock? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to sound arrogant about that. <laughs> I said it. It's yeah, okay. So, okay. If, you, if you don't know where Buffalo Wild Wings is, then you probably have been living under a rock. <laughs> of course, we're in the Yuma Palms Mall, and uh, we're pretty easy to find right by Harkins. I love the the newer renovations that you guys have done there. It's it's awesome, and especially for most of the time in the Yuma area, you can actually sit and enjoy the weather. Not right now, um, but you still make it nice and comfortable out there for everybody too. So well, I love did. it. We did. We invested heavily when we did the remodel and expansion, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a good piece of trivia. How well people remember? Do you realize how long it's been since we did that? Three years. Oh, bingo. Yeah. Nobody, really? Nobody gets that. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, next month will be three years. Wow. It seems like the time has just flown by. But To me, it really, still seems new every time I, I go in. <laughs> yeah. We're really, really blessed uh, with how things have gone here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had such success, and we're very thankful for the community support. But we try hard to give back to the community as well. So that, it's that's, really important for us to be a part of different things in the community. And that's why this collaboration with the Humane Society of Yuma is so important. We were speaking with Lana briefly on Facebook Live before we came back from the break. And we want to kind of give a, a rundown of some of the the numbers, 4th of July yeah. numbers. Because we, we talk about it and say, keep your animals safe. It's a right. very scary time for them. 
but when you actually see these numbers, it kind of changes your perspective a little bit. Yeah, so last week I said, um, you know, in 2017, we had 111 animals come in just from July 3rd to through the 6th. This year it was over 150. Oh, um, so it's been a huge jump, and we are simply, simply overwhelmed. Um, you know, July is historically just a really, really tough month for, for the Maine Society in both um, donations and um the animals coming in, but this this month in particular is is just or this time around is just overwhelming to us. Um, as much as we can prepare, um, there's nothing that we can do in in the event that you know numbers spike that high. So you had o o over 150 come in. How many were actually returned? Um, I believe it was about 18. Eight. 18, 18 so far. Um, I know 30 have gone out in a combination of adoptions and oh, return to owners. But, you know, we're waiving fees. We're trying to incentivize people to um, really get their, get, get their their animals general. back. But um, promotions like this, you know, getting the, our name out with Buffalo Wild Wings and making sure that we're out in the community, and um, especially this time of year, is huge for mm -hmm. us. So regardless of which way we're doing it, um, making sure that we're, we're out there and we're being seen and we're working with amazing community partners um, like Buffalo Wild Wings is, is, is huge for us. Well, what I love about this is the paw can be any amount that you want. You're not limited. A lot, of, a lot do one or two dollar donations for every, for every paw that you purchase that you're able to do more. We have a lot of people that are passionate about pets mm -hmm. in our yeah, community. Definitely. Yeah, I've noticed, I've noticed that we actually have a, an extraordinary amount of five dollars. You know, there's a lot of five and even ten dollar, twenty dollar kind of stuff, but uh, you know everything that you can do. Every dollar counts. It all adds up. I'm sure right now, this time of year, with this insufferable heat, it's mm -hmm. got to be awful for the animals out there. We've got a great personal story that we actually have a rescue dog, our Harley. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my little girl here with me right now, and uh, Harley was a rescue dog, and he also got lost once, and we got him back from the pound. Nice. So we've been through, you know, we've been through that kind of thing and actually going down to the shelter and finding out that someone did find him, return him, and we got him back. So, That's wonderful. So. Well, Aww. Leslie said none of the animals were chipped that came in. Unfortunately, some of the situations, they may have been chipped, but the information isn't current. Correct, yeah. You know, it, it's it's a plethora of different reasons, reasons how they yeah. got out, um, and we're not here to judge by any means um, well, no. because accidents happen all the time. And I know, I know um, a lot of people that go to extremes to try and keep their animals safe, but the, you don't realize how scared these animals get and what they will do to get to a, what they but feel, they feel is a safe, safe place. place. Yeah. And sometimes you can't keep them in, you know, um, so yeah, it, we the, everybody makes mistakes, mistakes happen, accidents happen. Um, but, you know, you need to do your part as an owner and go and try and find your animal. And, and, and they have, I, may they, you guys make it really easy. Yes, <laughs> you do. And, and I know we have multiple pet pages on mm -hmm. social media here in the local community. But, again, that's the only one element of it. By all means, post on all of those if you can. Share, share, share. Mm -hmm. Go check out the Humane Society of Yuma's Lost and Found, the pet album. Yeah. Share that also because some people have been reunited with their animals through a share by a friend. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, go down to the Humane Society. Now, our, the kennel is not open today. No, not today. Nope. But, I had to um, remember what day of the week it was. Yes, <laughs> not it open is. today. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, we, we I'm all going lost to track. the shelter today, but <laughs> it, it's not open to the public today. Um, you know, we were trying really, really hard to keep our, our online um, Lost and Found album up to date. Um, but again, it, it's a manual upload and we have to physically take pictures of everything um, and, and just the vast amount of animals that have come in within the past few days. Um, in this past week, it, it's it's it, it's a daunting task, and, and but we're you, trying very very hard. You know what? Go down to the shelters tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't call them and say my dog is missing. He's black and white. That is not going to help right now. No, or not. Facebook message us. That that doesn't help us either. Right. And again, they're they've taken. You know, it is a daunting task. There are a lot of animals they're trying to manage and you know hopefully get returned to their owners because they're you know a lot of the families are missing them. Exactly. You know, we want to make sure that that happens as quickly as possible and uh, reunite those families. Yeah, that's right, and Again, get down to Buffalo yes. Wild Wings this month, you know, as many times as you can, and let's fill, up, let's fill it up with all those pet paws. Yes, thank you. We have a lot, lot of regular customers, obviously, uh -huh. and with the success that we've enjoyed down there. So people come in more than once. You're certainly welcome to put more than one up there. Yeah. Uh, we also have a takeover. Right, um, on what, July 23rd. July 23rd is a takeover where 15% of all the proceeds 
um, go back to the Humane Society. So that, that takeover day will be very large for us. We want to encourage you to be a part of that. Is that going to be all day long? Uh, yes, that will okay. be all day long. Do, do they say anything when they come in, or is it simply 50% of all your sales? You, you know, normally, normally um, we do takeovers for all kinds of local organizations and people that need to raise funds. Mm -hmm. And normally it would be by bringing in a flyer or doing something, but we're actually going to donate 15% of all sales for the oh, entire fantastic. day. Great. So, we, you know, we go the extra mile with some of these big associations we have. We support local youth athletics real big with the Boys and Girls Club and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so we've taken the um, Humane Society to that A level. <laughs> uh, you know, we're just simply going to donate all day. So we have a we have a base goal of five thousand dollars, but I mean I think it's going to be a lot larger. Ah, wow, let's let's shoot for higher. Let's see exactly. Thing, at the end of the whole thing, uh, my sister Lisa, who is also my partner, her and I are going to write a check at the end of it personally on top of what funds are raised for that fundraiser on that day. Oh, so oh we nice. really plan on taking this to a level that, awesome. that, that, that you know, we want to be one of the big players in how this works, be able to take care of the animals, and of course be a part of the community. All right, and Lana, make sure to give us updates once yes, you know once absolutely. August hits, so so we yeah. can do that. And I know a lot of people, the, the volunteers and some of the donations are down anyway because it's summer. People are traveling and it's one of those things that, you know, they're not able to get down or, you know, maybe they use their money to go see the big mouse and they're not able to make a donation <laughs> to the main society. Well, you should mention that. We just did that last week. <laughs> I know. So, I, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our guests today, Lana and Chris, thank you both so much for coming in today. Get down to Buffalo Wild Wings and get your your pet paw, and don't forget that takeover coming up on July 23rd. Sounds good. All right. And go pick up your pets. Yes, go pick up your pets. <laughs> and with, with the up. impending storms we do have over the next few days, make sure you keep them safe. Mm -hmm. All right. It's time to take our Lotus Day Spa and Salon selfie out in the courtyard. We'll be back after this with Carol from Helping Hands on Z93. The show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. They have 30 years of experience and knowledge, and you can trust them with your business payroll and monthly bookkeeping needs. Give Dave and his crew a call today at 343-1040. And Sprague Sports, visit their partner location, Truckmates. You must home for 3M window tinting. Protect your car's interior and keep cooler while driving around this summer. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And if your home isn't comfortable, it might be time to call the professional. Call Quick Refrigeration at 782-3691. They've been heating and cooling the Yuma area since 19. 1955. And our friends over at Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialists, right now, this is the time of year that you're seeing all of those creepy crawlers, ants, crickets, cockroaches, silverfish, spiders, maybe a scorpion or two. Give the professionals a call at Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialists. Their number is 343-9149, or you can like them on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. We'll be back with today and you want after the break on Z93 and Outlaw Country. Oh, fuzzy and like Good that. job! Oh, yes. You're welcome. You're going to be in our selfie too, I think. You have to be in our selfie. <laughs> oh, the humidity. Oh, oh, it's lovely. lovely. Yeah. I love your dress. I know. Isn't yeah. that cute? <laughs> and your shoes. Thanks. Everything coordinates. Oh, of course, that's yeah. awesome. The only thing that doesn't. Okay. <laughs> oh, my oh, oh no! That's okay. Okay. All right. Come on over here. So. I kept on wanting to shout. It was. Here we go. Ready? Smile. Hi, thank you. Good job. Oh, it was Jen. What is that noise? All right. Birthday. Everyone's been early today. That's a good thing. Early's good. Oh, thank you. Just so you have some of the info in front of you. Perfect. Thank you very much. doing we are good how are you good good I took a little bit of time off last week for the first time and us too, us too. <laughs> and us too. I'm out in my pool and it was it was nice. really nice 
it was really nice. Got to read things I just wanted to read, and you know. <laughs> not things you had to go through. Yeah, things and, I didn't yeah. have to study the things that I wanted to. So it was I'm nice. on my second book. <gasps> no no way! I know. I read one up there, and I bought one up there. Really? Mm -hmm. Didn't realize till halfway through that I read one. I think about 18 years ago. It seems very familiar, but I don't remember. You can't, so you read you. So, I love that. Again. I love I I do that with movies. I'll not like not watch me for a long time and watch it again and I'm like this seems familiar. I am on a kick. I want to I for I saw something somebody posted something on Facebook about it and I was like, "Oh, I want to watch that movie." And I cannot find it anywhere. What is it? What is it? The old the Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio. You cannot find it anywhere. I Netflix everywhere. You cannot find it anywhere. I am tempted to order it. I want to watch it so bad. I wonder if it's a Prime video. I it must. I don't know. I've looked everywhere, and I've um, it is on Amazon for five bucks. So I'm like, Dad, can you order this for me, please? Because I want to watch it, and I can't find it anywhere. With the technology we have, <laughs> we cannot find it anywhere. And I I've just been wanting to watch. I've been wanting to watch it since I saw that post, and now I can't find it anywhere. I have not been to the movies. Have you been to the movies? No, we, there were a couple we wanted to go see. Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yeah. And then something else. I'm way behind Oh, Jeff movies. wants to see Sicario. Which one's that? Uh, the guy, I think his family's killed, something in Mexico, there's drugs, <laughs> and dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember from the preview. <laughs> hey, Chrissy. Hi, Amber. Oh, Amber says, morning, Carol. <laughs> Good morning. I can rent it on Amazon Video. Yeah, well, it's not five dollars. I can buy it and have it forever. So. Is that VHS? No, <laughs> it's Blu-ray. <laughs> Blu-ray for five bucks? That's not bad. That's not bad, right? Did you look in the big bin at Walmart? Yes, <laughs> I did. I'm telling you, I've looked everywhere. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to Today in You, I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are live here on Z93, Outlaw Country, Monster Media, Yuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live. Next up with this, Carol Brown with Helping Hands of Yuma. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. How are and you? Welcome back. Thank you. We're good. Thank you. All right, we're going to talk Give 65 today. Yes, this is an amazing opportunity that is for nonprofits that serve the senior population. It's through Home Instead Foundation. Obviously, they provide care. The company itself provides care to seniors, so mm -hmm. they start a foundation. This is our second year participating, and we are really excited about this opportunity. There just really aren't opportunities like this for organizations that provide services to seniors. Mm -hmm. So this began actually July 1st because they did it a little differently this year. People could start pre-scheduling their donations in advance and they go right into our account starting tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Oh, and that's what I was, I, I remember this from last year mm -hmm. and I remember that, you know, you had like a, was it a certain time you were trying mm -hmm. to get? Right, so the Give 65 stands for 65 hours. Okay. So literally it's gonna start tomorrow morning at six. It's gonna finish on the 12th at 11 p.m., 65 hours of giving. But this gives us an opportunity to get a jump on it, mm -hmm. have people pre-schedule when it was convenient for them. And you can still do that today, of course. Yeah. And then it's ready to go into our account tomorrow morning. That is what is going to help us get the matching money. Our goal is $10,000 to raise this summer, which as you were just talking previous to me, summertime is very, very tough for nonprofit organizations. And we certainly fall in that category mm -hmm. of it being a tough summer. So this is a great opportunity for us to have something um, available in July in Yuma. So the matching money, um, as soon as all of the money has been given out by the foundation, it's gone. So the sooner people donate to us, that's why we really pushed hard for pre-scheduling your donation. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, we stand a better chance of getting the full amount of a matching uh, dollar donation that's five thousand dollars that we have available to us in matching money mm -hmm. as long as it's available and those funds help you to continue to care for your senior care clients absolutely absolutely we rely on our our local donors we rely on individuals businesses foundations we don't get any government subsidies we don't have any funding available to us as perhaps might be for some other uh, nonprofits so for us we really have to rely on our community 
to step up and keep in mind that our seniors, many of them, don't have anyone to help them. Yeah. And that's where we come in as we try to fill that gap to help them stay living independently. And I will say in the summertime, safely, mm -hmm. especially. That's, that's one of the things that people, I'm really happy to see that people have been sharing. We have been enduring some extreme temperatures. Yes. And people have been sharing on social media. The reminder to check on your elderly neighbors, family members, mm -hmm or maybe homebound individuals because right. they might be in a situation to perhaps they're struggling financially and they can't afford to run that air conditioner. Well, and, exactly. and, and there's a lot of elderly people that, you know, they'll just live with it. If their air, their AC goes out and they'll just put up with it, but they don't realize they're putting themselves at risk. You know, they, oh, we did it back in the day. Well, I'll be fine. Well, you're a lot older than you were before and you can't withstand a lot of that stuff you used to be able to. That is exactly right. My husband works outside every day. Now he's um, strong, he's healthy, and he takes the precautions that he needs to to stay hydrated throughout the day. Now if a senior had to do, even just be outside like he is exposed for 12 hours on a summer day, um, we'd have them in the hospital. Mm -hmm. They cannot tolerate it. They have to stay hydrated. They need to be able to cool off. We're doing our summer campaign again this year like we did last year. So we have water, um, a hydration drink, and nutritional drinks available. And I'm excited that it looks like we're going to get a donation of some floor fans. Oh, oh fantastic. Cool. And so we have those things available, at least the drinks at this time. And if the fans come in, we'll have those that we can distribute also. That's why we've been pushing it, because it's really important for people to remember anyone can succumb to the heat in Yuma. Right. But our, our seniors are very, very vulnerable, and it takes much less time for them to get dehydrated. Now, if they are in a situation themselves, Carol, or know someone who could benefit from the resources that Helping Hands of Yuma offers, how can they reach out to your organization? All they need to do is give us a call, 305-9974. They can jump on our website and send a message. They can jump on our Facebook page and ask for help. Uh, we try to be very responsive. We try to check these things. Uh, people who are looking for our services, uh, senior, you can literally go on our website, helpingyuma.org, and you can request, you can fill out a request to become a care client. Right. And, and volunteers are, are so very important to you. Always. Um, especially in the summertime. I yes. know that a lot of people don't realize that our um, winter visitors do a lot for our community. Um, they actually go out and they donate their time. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to do our part for this in the summertime if you are. And, and you guys have so many easy jobs. And I say easy, you can do from your home, whether it be picking up a phone, if you have time to, to drive somebody to an appointment, you have the available, you have things available f um, for everybody. We really do. There's, there's lots of choices and opportunities and the amount of time you schedule yourself as a volunteer. So if you only have an hour a week or an hour a month, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We can find a way to plug you into something you would enjoy doing. But without our volunteers and without funding, we certainly cannot provide these kind of services to our seniors who really don't have another avenue to go to in order to get these things that they need. Um, all the other options cost money. So we are the only one that can provide that free transportation. Volunteers need to be able to provide that and partner with us. And the funding helps us to be able to cover the costs of what we do to support our seniors year round. Give 65 is what's going to help us yes. actually weather these summer months. And I want to tell you, it is extremely easy to donate through Give 65. It's as simple as, and I'm going to show you because it's, it's this fast. You can get on your phone and just type in give65.org. That simple. It's going to pull up their opening page, okay? Uh, this is this where is Facebook just, Live comes into yeah, play This here, is just yeah, their yeah. opening yeah. page. All you have to do is scroll down where it says find a project, type in Yuma. Type in Yuma because you know why? We're the only nonprofit in Yuma that serves seniors the way we do. So oh, we are the okay. only organization and it pulls our page up automatically. Go. Now right now it's not showing any of this pre-scheduled donations. It's hidden until tomorrow morning. So we actually had someone who, who uh, generously donated prior to the pre-scheduling. So we're showing a little bit of money in our account right now. Yeah. 
tomorrow it'll show then what whatever we've received so far the pre schedules yes okay. but today is a really important day of course every day is going to help us but today is an important day because i really believe the pre scheduled donations give us the best chance at receiving the matching dollars and and again you need to get those in as quickly as possible that mm -hmm. way you have your chance at that money because once it's gone it's gone and we want to get every yes. cent we can now Until the other midnight on the 12th correct uh it's actually 11 a.m for us because of the our okay. arizona time but okay. another opportunity will be there is prize money available mm -hmm. and that we could uh compete for if we had the most amount of unique donors give for that it just takes as little as a ten dollar donation and if we were to end up being the highest uh, donated organization through unique donors, which means yeah. all of us, yeah. <laughs> uh, we could win ten thousand oh, dollars. Come on, you want? We can do. And, and, and like you said, this money goes straight back into our community, to our elderly, our elderly, elderly community. And you guys, you guys have stretched your legs. You used to be, you know, greater Yuma area, but now you are actually in the Yuma community, and you need those volunteers here. And we do in, in the in the city. It was in originally city, yeah. foothills, but it has expanded countywide. So. Yes, yes, we really do. If we can uh, just keep building those volunteers in the city, we're going to be able to do more and more for our seniors. All right, our guest today, Carol Brown. Don't forget that website is give65.org. Yes, thank right. you. Thanks, Carol. Thank it's you. time to take our Lotus Day Spa and Salon Selfie. We will be back with Bridget and Mr. Pint talking about AWC's new UAS and GIS certificate programs on Today in Yuma. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, ladies. I sure appreciate it. No problem at all. You'll have to give us an update once you have to Yes. Too. Well, and I'm, I'm just really, really hopeful. Really hopeful that from last they, year yeah. to this year, we've been able to expand the coverage yes. a lot. And so people know more about us and are hearing more. So we are very hopeful, but also the unique, the unique users. The unique donors. Yeah. yeah. Very I like that. That's my two as well. It is. And there. they actually say that on the site. Okay. I love that. Right here. Smile. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. See you later. Good to see you. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Bye bye. Trying to bye. keep the cold air in. I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay. Don't forget you're on Facebook Live. Hello. Oh, we are. Yes. Okay. Just got the camera. Did they not let you know that? <laughs> That's okay. Surprise. <laughs> We have quite a and following. How do you say your last name, Todd? Pent. Pent. Okay. And you guys said it both ways now. I'm I think you said pieces. it both ways. I'm going to open the drone case since we're on Facebook Live. Oh, yeah. We have the visual component here. Okay, let me move these flyers. You can put it right there. That would be awesome. Build those muscles, build those muscles. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. It already has a battery. I'm not gonna turn it on. No, we're, we're good. <laughs> no, I'm kind of scared. Oh, it wouldn't go anywhere. Can you, you'll both pull those microphones close. Yes, to you. pretty close. Yeah, yeah, you want to get right, right in front of you there, and they're pretty directional. So if you turn, kind of want to keep your mouth in front of it this a little bit. <laughs> All right, we're ready. Yep. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. Now we're switching up gears this time, and we're going to be talking with Bridget Joanning and Dr. Pent. I'm sorry, Mr. Pent? Not, yeah, yeah. Please okay. don't uh, accelerate sorry. my academic. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Pent is here with us, and you're going to be talking about Arizona Western College's new UAS and GIS certificate programs. 
Yes. First, I want to say thank you very much for ZNA3 and having us here today. Um, this is a new certification program that's going to allow uh, individuals that are already in the fields or students coming out of high school uh, to be able to get credentials in UAS to become licensed uh, 107 pilots uh, under the FAA and GIS certifications at the entry level and also at a specialist level and that will allow them to be able to use uh, spatial uh, computations in the field. So it's not only a career field builder for individuals that are looking at opportunities, but it's also certifications for those that are in existing fields, either business, private sector, or government, to be able to get their credentials as well. Okay. So for somebody who may not have any idea what the UAS and GIS and all this stands for, kind of give us an idea of what this program is. Certainly. Uh, UAS stands for Unmanned Aerial Systems. Uh, it's dealing with basically remote sensing. Uh, there's always been a component of spatial data collection and uh, the UAS uh, is really groundbreaking over the last few years yeah, and entering into many fields. So uh, the biggest thing is that uh, a lot of the Yuma graduates uh, didn't have that opportunity and we'd like to be able to offer that to allow students that not only are looking at other career fields but to gain that uh, additional tool. Uh, GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems, and it is, a lot of people will put it to an a inappropriate title of really just being digital mapping, mm -hmm. but it's much more beyond that because it's looking at data, analyzing that data, and being able to use it as a deliverable in some kind of uh, community or in some kind of business venture. And Todd, you're the founder of the program, correct? I don't like that title. <laughs> <laughs> Like you were you were instrumental. <laughs> I, in. I, would like to, I would like to really thank the entire GIS community, uh, starting about two years ago, uh, meeting with individuals from government agencies, private sector, agricultural community, mm -hmm. uh, have all come forward to assist in the curriculum development for this program. So, in no way am I a, a founder at all. It's it's really just being an, an avenue uh, into Arizona Western College uh, to start facilitating this uh, in the community. All right, now Bridget, what is your association with this? I have been in, I've been in the GIS uh, department for 22 years, so that is my career. I work for the Department of Interior. I've been with the Department of Interior for 28 years. And I used to call myself a digital mapper, but Todd is right. It is more, <laughs> it's more about the data. You know, we have data integrity. People don't realize you use data every day, and people are always wanting to know things that are current. So usually, typically in federal government, we have to wait at least two years for aerial imagery, and manned flights are millions of dollars, you know, if you do a whole, a whole entire state. So two years, by the time, two days is too long. So two years ago, I got involved by doing, uh, becoming a, a drone operator because I wanted the spatial data now. And we have construction projects that are on the ground mm -hmm. and we need to have the, the updated imagery. And also you can tell with, you know, uh, you can monitor your crops with, with it. Oh, but wow. It's, it's all about having the data now. If you wait for a week, your crop might die. You know, mm -hmm. who knows what's going to happen. But it's all about now. And if you can go out and with the conditions right, you can use, this is my Phantom 4 Pro. This is, again, where Facebook Live is, yeah. is a, a little different uh, vehicle by which you can see these amazing things but that they brought in. You can capture Im aerial imagery, and you can process it, and you can have your map with the current imagery. You can also do a transparency from the old imagery to the new imagery, and you can see the change in what you're trying to, to, com to accomplish. Now, if um, somebody out there is wanting to take part in this uh, class that you have out at AWC, do they have to have their own drone when they go in? No, they don't have to have their own drone. We will be purchasing drones through the college. We will be have, it, have drones for them to use. If they want to purchase one on their own, we are going to be teaching them what the regulations are yeah. and all the mm -hmm. rules to follow so they can be a safe operator. What to look for, Yes, too. I know a lot of people in the community have uh, branched out, especially those who like doing the aerial photography. You know, yeah. it's, it's just another another opportunity to get a variety of shots that you might not otherwise have. But I, I hadn't really thought of the the agriculture component before, yeah. too. And you're right. You, you can't wait. Things need to be, be done quickly because uh, conditions change on, on a very quick basis. And, and, and there is a lot of more people now using the, this technology for their for their livelihood, whether it be agriculture or, or you know other things like that. But there is so many regulations on them that you need, like you said, you need to be a safe operator. There are very many regulations, and I didn't realize when I first purchased a drone 
what they are. There are airspace authorizations mm -hmm. that you need to have in order in order to fly in Yuma. I haven't flown very much commercially because of that reason. So that is part of the, what the program is about: is to teach everyone how to go about all the regulations, how to follow the rules, become a safe 107 operator. And how do they actually get signed up or get registered for the course? You can go to ArizonaWestern.edu, and if you search for classes, you can um, search for UAS, and it'll pop up the classes. Oh, and if you search for GST, GST, then you can find the GIS courses. And the first course for unmanned aircraft, the intro, is a class that I will be teaching. And so far, there's Monday, Wednesday, and Saturdays. Saturday mornings are available. There are also, it's, it's a five-week course, is that? Uh, eight weeks. It's eight weeks. Eight weeks for this first course, and then it's a certificate program, so you'll go eight weeks and then another class eight weeks. So you don't have too many classes all at once. All right, well, that works out well. And I know where people are getting ready to start signing up for the fall semester, too. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, I think, underway right now. It is. I think it's open right now. It's already yep. taking place. So. I will interject. There's also a uh, summer camp for uh, cool. students that are 14 in the age up in high school. It is a uh, basically an informatics and GIS summer camp for Arizona Western College offered by the Career Technical Education. Mm -hmm. And that will be on the 23rd through the 26th uh, morning sessions where they'll get some hands-on and be able to use some of these different types of tools. And how do they, um, how do they go about signing up for that one? Uh, that will be through the Career Technical Education okay. Department, and so if they, again, go to Arizona Western College, uh, they can contact uh, uh, Dean uh, Ritika Daiwan mm -hmm. uh, and the CTE office. Oh, perfect. Great information. Yes. Uh, yeah. The phone number for that is 344-7656, and the 16th is the deadline to register. July 16th for that? Yes. And again, the camp is the 23rd through the 26th? Yes. Great information if you have a student that's interested in pursuing that or just learning a little bit more. Well, yeah, great opportunity, you know, for for our youngsters to maybe, you know, find something that may turn into a career for them. They are the future. They are. Now, Teresa, did you know that Bridget and I have known each other for years since Safford days? No, I did not. Yes, we did. We have all kinds of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I lived in Safford for 28 years. Oh, wow. I both with her mother, Janelle. Oh, <laughs> how awesome is that? Yeah, when, when I found out she moved back to the Yuma community, I'm like, Hey, someone else here. That I, I know, know her. <laughs> There's just that different dynamic. It like is people that just kind of get literally when they're from where you came hometown, from. Yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Now, aren't you from Yuma? I'm born and raised in Yuma. Yes. Okay. Then you made your way to Stafford, then found your way back here. Yes, I did. All right. Now, what about you, Todd? Where do you hail from? Uh, originally from Iowa, but I went to middle school and high school here in Yuma, Arizona, wow. and uh, went off with the Marine Corps for a little while and got my degree and then came back to Yuma and really have been pushing academics and helping students advance their careers is always my uh, goal in my, my profession. Well, thank you for your service and all those yes. arenas. Uh, <laughs> Helping mold young minds is extremely important, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you've just done it all. No, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it, though. <laughs> all right, azwestern.edu is the website for Arizona Western College if mm -hmm. you're interested in learning more. But again, you can give um, Dean Ritika Dewan a call at 344-7656 if you'd like more details uh, about the summer camp. Yes. Too, or the, the program in general. She can answer any questions you may have. Correct. I love this. It's yet another example of how you can further, this is some education that you would not normally find here in Yuma, and now you can be found right at AWC. One thing I would like to also add is the law enforcement, first responders, search and rescue, public affairs, public relations, aerial imagery, doing it as a, an actual career. There's so many drone operators. There's a lot of applications that not the normal person would just think off the top of their head, but we're here to help everyone learn what those can be. Awesome. All right. Again, if you are not following us on Facebook Live, go and check out the feed later. You can see the whole thing once we finish right at 10 o'clock, but yeah. you can see the drone that they have brought into the studio today. That's pretty cool. Now, what is this one that is that you have here? This is a Phantom 4 Pro. It's made by DJI. They are the le leading manufacturer for drones for commercial, for off the shelf, for regular consumers. These are no way anywhere close to what military uses. This is just for you know aerial imagery. It's a 4K video. There are other options of different drones. There's so many platforms, and that's what we call them platforms. It all depends on what job you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, it, again, there's so many jobs out there that people might not have thought of. I also have, I have five drones, actually, that in my <laughs> arsenal, I guess you could say. <laughs> and one of them has a, a sensor on it that is, um, 
it is an infrared and you can do roof inspections. Mm -hmm. You could find oh. the hot spots in the electrical. You could see if there's an animal that's sick, it shows infection. I just recently oh started learning how to do that. It's called thermography. It's a, a whole nother element, course. another level yes. of what this is it doing. Is very, very complicated. That that test was more complicated than the UAS, the, the part 107. So it is a whole nother career wow. that maybe in the future AWC will have, but it's definitely something that could be a career and a money maker for we'll, someone. We'll start with baby yes. steps. We'll take <laughs> exactly. these as a fire. Start exactly. with your 107. Exactly. <laughs> it is a wonderful addition. All right, our guests today, Bridget and Todd, thank you so much for coming in for today in Yuma. We'll pop out and take our Lotus Day Spa and Salon selfie, and you can see all those on our website a little bit later today at monstermediayuma.com. Just click on the Today in Yuma page. We will see everyone tomorrow. We have a full show for you the rest of the week. Yes. It's Today in Yuma on Z93, Outlaw Country, monstermediayuma.com. KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. Thank you so much. Thank you very I'll much. She's, she's got to flip a switch and then we'll take a picture real quick. All right. Well, if I would have thought about it, I could have done a selfie. <laughs>